I'm sure that many of you have noticed that so far, each uh, back-to-back -back comparison has had something in common with the comparison before it. In this case, Blood Feast and Blood Diner have nothing in common with Cape Fear. I just didn't know where to go from there. Also, you're going to have to excuse me if this feels rushed. In about 45 minutes, I'm supposed to be picked up by my friends to go to a fall festival with them. So, I would like to just get this done and uploaded before then. Let, whether I accomplish that remains to be seen. As was the case with Tourist Trap vs. House of Wax, Blood Diner is not an official licensed remake of Blood Feast, but that was what it was intended to be, and it does have more in common with Blood Feast than 2005's House of Wax did with Tourist Trap. In both of these movies, you've got a killer who's going after women and collecting body parts from them so that he can reconstruct and resurrect this Egyptian goddess. So it's almost like a Frankenstein story. So to start off with, I'll give you a brief comparison of the Egyptian goddess in each film. In the original film, she is referred to as Ishtar, whereas in the remake, she's referred to as Shitar. Um, she never even appears in the original, so she's not technically a character, but at the end of Blood Diner, you do get a little more payoff. Now let's talk about the gory elements of each film, because that was essentially the purpose for Blood Feast. They just wanted to make this sort of gory horror grindhouse flick and build an almost plot around it. Um, and of course, the effects are very simple. Uh, not a lot of them are very convincing, but at the same time, they are very gross to look at in some scenes. Though, uh, most of the time I couldn't even tell what parts I was supposed to be looking at. It just felt like they took these random substances and just threw a bunch of red paint on them. Um, but again, it was still kind of gross to look at. I will admit there was one scene involving someone's head being busted open and it almost looked like they were using real brain. As for Blood Diner, I wouldn't consider it to be gross at all, mostly just because it's played up for more comedic effect. Like, there's a point where somebody gets hit in the back of the head with a shovel and his eyes just pop out of his head and land on the ground. Um, and then there's a point right after that where someone's head just kind of pops out of their skull and up into the air. I don't even know how that happens. It's not the type of movie that you can question for physics. And um, the killers in this movie, because there are, there are multiple ones this time, seem to have superhuman strength because there's one point where one of them picks up a body and just kind of tosses it like a sack of potatoes. And then another scene that I need to bring up is a point where someone's head is dipped into um, this uh, frying oil and when it comes out like the fried batter around their head isn't even slightly head shaped it's just a perfect sphere shape so it's pretty cheesy but pretty funny. Now let's talk about the police in each film. In the film Blood Feast um, there are two policemen who have got just tons and tons of exposition to spare. They say a lot of really obvious things and they don't come off as the brightest people when they're trying to solve this case, but um, at the same time I still kind of love them just because of how unintentionally funny some of their dialogue is. In the remake, for one thing, I don't even know if the voices of these characters were the voices of the original actors you saw on screen because they just sound so off whenever they're talking, and um, they still have a lot of corny dialogue, but in this case, it's a little more intentionally humorous. Um, and then there's this more intelligent female detective who joins them in the movie. She plays, a little, she plays it a little more straight, but she's still got some very funny scenes as well, particularly when one of the cops is trying to hit on her, and it's really not in the smoothest way. Um, and then I noticed there was one point in the film where she kind of had this Boston accent, and then in the scene right after that, she sounded more Australian for some reason. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but... 
Now let's talk about the killers, who are essentially the main characters in each film. In Blood Feast, he is easily the best part of the entire movie. I love the way that he talks. The way that he walks is even hilarious. Um, he's being played by a younger actor, but they painted over his eyebrows and his hair with, like, gray something to make him seem older. And there's even a scene very late in the film where he has to point out three times that he is an old man. Um, just so you know, audience, this gray hair isn't premature, I swear. But, um, yeah, he is just can't be fun. In Blood Diner, the original killer was caught by the police and shot down. And then, after a few decades go by, his nephews bring him back as a talking brain. Once again, don't question the physics of this movie. Um, and his nephews essentially take his place to fulfill his destiny of bringing the Egyptian goddess Shitar back from the dead. Um, one of the killers is a complete idiot, but also a very skilled cook, and he also does most of the killing. Um, his brother is just a little bit smarter and he's also capable of hypnosis which the killer in the original blood feast was as well but between them they don't even have two brain cells to rub together um their uncle is essentially the brains of the operation and i make no apologies for that pun in the end blood feast is a terrible film but it is terrible in the same way as Troll 2 or The Happening, where it easily falls into the So Bad It's Good category, where you can sit there and have a good laugh um, at just how badly made it is. So if you're interested in seeing that type of film, I would recommend you check it out. But for me personally, I prefer Blood Diner. I like the more intended humor. It still gets plenty of good laughs out of me. And I also like how there was more creativity put into it. It's easily, it's not a great film by any means, don't let me hype it up too much. Um, it's actually really stupid, but it's one of the strangest and silliest horror films you're ever likely to see, and I kind of love it for that. Anyway, that's all I've got to say for this comparison. I hope you all have a good one.